Hello and welcome to the Adventurous Art Room. My name is Miss Ianson and I teach K-12 Art at Waterville School District. I'm really excited to be working with the Rocky Reach Dam and the River Power Project to create some cool pieces of artwork with you guys today. Let's get started. Okay, so to create our sockeye salmon stained glass style piece of artwork, you're going to need some washable markers, a paintbrush and some water, a sharpie if you have one, and some white paper. Remember you can send your finished piece of work to the adventurous art room at gmail.com. Today, you'll be playing the role of scientific illustrator. What is a scientific illustrator, I hear you ask? Well, let's find out. A scientific illustrator's job is to accurately present the features of a real animal or plant. Making their drawings accurate helps scientists to learn how to identify lots of different species. Today, our artwork will consist of two parts. First, we will create a scientific study using basic shapes to help us be more accurate. Then we will decorate in a stained glass style, creating a vibrant and eye-catching piece of art. A scientific illustrator's job or first step is to research and learn as much as they can about the plant or animal he or she is about to draw. It's very important as well that they accurately represent the animal or plant as much as possible. That's why you can see on this illustration the large amount of different fins and gill covers and eyes that are all significantly labelled. Like I said, it's very important that we try and make these animals as accurate as possible, which is why we use these drawings as our guide. Our detailed drawing down here. So the first thing that was on there was a circle in the middle for the main part of the body of the salmon. What I want you to do is draw that onto your paper nice and lightly. I'm pressing pretty hard so you can see it. Drawing a nice big circle in the middle of your paper. That's the next you want to draw a triangle on the side of your circle. Again, quite a big triangle with a point headed towards the paper's edge. Then what you want to do is draw a square that kind of starts uh, right here on the tip and cuts across. So what do I do? I make a square about the same width as the triangle, a little bit smaller, right there. That's pretty important. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on my head. The head is basically one giant triangle. Pretty easy and pretty straightforward to get. Make sure that the triangle basically points towards the edge of the circle. There we go. So now we have a triangle, a circle, a, another triangle, a rectangle, or a square, and then we're going to have one more triangle right here. This time the point straight and the point is going to go and it's going to cross the square like so. Perfect. Add that detail in. First, we're going to start with creating the body shape all the way around, and then we'll worry about all the little details later. We're going to start right here in the middle of the back area and work towards the tail and then come back towards the head. So, what I want you to do is think about the back of the fish. It kind of goes around from this triangle, and I'm using Sharpie, feel free to use pencil all the way around the top of the circle and we're going to go all the way towards that square following the different shapes kind of jumping from one to the other nice and smoothly to that square right there okay we're going to be able to go up towards the tip of the triangle which is where the fin is the power fin the one that gives the salmon all of those amazing abilities all the way up here now what we're going to do is, instead of following the triangle down, because it's not a straight line on this fish, we want to come in and then come back to this corner. So watch what I do in my Sharpie. I follow the line to begin with, but then I come in and then back out towards the edge of that triangle. That's going to make it look a little bit more realistic. Now we want to start following it up to where's the, towards where the triangle meets the square. So I'm going to pull my up towards that square area and then I'm going to stop. Now I know that I need to start coming back towards the body. Back down here and remember this is a scientific drawing so we're trying to make it as accurate as possible. Now we've followed the line of the triangle. We're so we're going to go around the circle's bottom 
there we go and back up towards this end now this is where it gets a little bit tricky because the face of the um, sockeye salmon is very complicated it has a hook and we want to try and make it look as accurate as possible so watch what I do I start up here come around but instead of following the triangle when it comes to the tip of the triangle I'm actually gonna make a hook shape and watch what I do so I come around with my line and instead of following that triangle what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start going up a little ways to come back around into that hook shape once I hit that I'm gonna and then down like so so I'm creating a real hook shape for the top part of the fish's jaw now we want to start coming back again down here towards the other side of the triangle and stop once you hit that triangle once you hit the triangle we're going to come back up and create that bottom jaw so I'm watch I'm going to come up again towards the hook but stop just before you reach it come back around creating that bottom jaw just like so and that's making a much more accurate look for that jaw now what we want to do is very carefully just connect these guys back up like so and there we have the basic fish shape of a sockeye salmon now what we need to do is just erase all of these lines and guide shapes and I'll see you in a second. What I'm going to do is I want to give it an actual lip by creating a line down here and it's going to go just past its meeting with the lower jaw just like that. It's kind of creating a lip shape. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically just tuck this down here like so. Then I can add my eye. My eye wants to do, be kind of towards this pointed area, but just above it. So we're going to put the eye right here. And then we're going to do a little pupil like that. And then what we're going to do is draw. And the nostril goes, if we follow up from the eye towards that hook, it's about here. And it's just a little nostril shape, like so. Now that we have tidy that up a little bit now that we have that detail we can start thinking about where the gills are and the gill cover so what we're going to do is we're going to add a shape like so towards the kind of I'm going to say that's towards the middle of the before the, the hump and the hook kind of in the middle and we're going to kind of create a backward C shape just like so because this is when we're going to start to be able to add in those details that make this more accurate so that's shapes right there. Then we're going to add that gill cover right here. And again, that's going to come up. And then a back around towards that first C, like so. Now I'm going to add a little bit of detail for a different reason, an artistic reason. And I'll show you in a second why. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start working on all of the different fins. Now first we're going to start on the pectoral fin. The pectoral fin is the one right at the front. And we're going to start right next to the gill, about a finger width away. And we're going to go down, like so. And then we're going to make a straight line across towards the body. Great stuff. Then we're going to move over here towards the pelvic fins. Our pelvis is where our hip bone is. So we're going to put his pelvis bone, um, sorry, his pelvis fin right here. And then what we want to do is start coming down pelvis fin and then we're going to come back up towards the body like this make it a little bit of a wobbly line perfect and then finally we have the rudder, rudder fin like just like on a boat a rudder steers so what we're going to do is we're going to have that fin right down here coming down and then towards the at the end so we have the rudder fin it comes down like so and then back up all the way up to about here so we're going to go all the way up perfect excellent good job guys now what we can do is we can start working on the top fins okay so we've got the mystery fin the one that wore it's a little one right here nice and easy then we've got the really important dorsal fin that's the same as the one that we see when we see on the sharks on the movies that make everybody a bit nervous so we can have our dorsal fin it's going to be pretty big it's going to come up and down so we're going to go up 
stop and then down and we want this downwards one to not be great. Now we can start adding in our details on our fins because we're going to try and make this look a little bit interesting. So we're going to start adding some lines on our fins that go up like so to try and give it a little bit of detail because when we look at fins they do have these little lines in them, spikes in them. And then we're going to go on these ones we're going to go pointing towards the ground or the down. So we're going to go down like this. Perfect, nice stripes all the way there. Pause the video if you need to. And then we're going to do the same on these two fins down. Nice stripes. And then same for this one. Making all those fins look like they can really propel our fish forward. Now when it comes to the power fin, that to be able to jump up the ladders and up the rocks. We want this to be connected by a kind of divide. So we're going to make a little divide or a little backward C shape right here. And that's going to be where the body connects to that power fin, like so. And then from here, we're going to be able to create those lines that we want towards the end of the fish. So we're going to again do those lines right here. Oh my paper. Nice. They kind of get wider towards the ends. They're kind of close together at this this area right here, but they're wider apart at the bottom. You can see how I'm doing that right there. Nice. Great job, guys. I'm going to tidy this up a little bit now that I've gone over the edge a little bit. Alrighty. Perfect. Alright, so now that we've got this is our really accurate drawing, what we can do is we can start making this look a little bit more creative for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start breaking up the fish into different sections. Now on the fish, you can actually see a special type of stripe on the um, side of the fish. And it's kind of where the red, bright color meets the, uh, the skin on the lower half of the body that's kind of a different tone. So to create that line, the lateral line that comes across, it's going to be like a bit of a wiggly line from the area where the gill meets right here all the way to the tail. So again, I'm going to create that kind of wiggly line all the way to our fish's tail. Perfect. Now this scientific as our drawing is going to get. So if you wanted to take a mental picture or if you want to take a picture for your teacher, this is where the scientific drawing becomes an artistic drawing. So again, take that mental scientific picture and let's begin the arty part of this part, um, part of this project. We're going to make it look like a stained glass into as many pieces as possible. So I'm going to create a line across here. And another line across the top. Perfect. Alrighty, so now we want to break up the face area and the gills so that we can add more than one color to our stained glass sockeye fish. So I'm going to start cutting up areas like this to make it so that I can add more than one color to my... I'm going to add a little bit of a line right here. I want, I want my lines that break up my fish uh, to be different. So I want my face to almost be a different series of lines breaking it up than the back portion. I want them to be very separate. Then what I want to do is I want to start at the back so I can have lots of different colors. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pen and I'm just kind of going to drag it across the back to the other side. And again on here, breaking it up to this side right here. Trying to make these sections so like about the same size as a, uh, a marker pen. And then I'm going to break up this one so I don't have too many colors. Then when it comes towards the fish, we're going to make the line stop like that. And then kind of carry on towards the end. Oops, I just went over his tail. That's okay. Just for around the face, I'm going to just kind of bring the lines in and stop as if it's going behind the fish, like so. Might want to carry that one on into the background. There we go. 
and then the big ones at the bottom are pretty easy to do. Just go over each other. Each section is broken up into pieces. I'm going to do one that comes up to the fish right here. Like so. Brilliant. Okay, great. Oh, I think there's too much space right there, so I'm going to maybe make one more line come through. Like that. Awesome. Alrighty. Now we can start adding in our markers. Okay, now comes the fun part. I have got all my markers. Some of these are not great, some of them are old, some of them are new. And I've split them into two teams. I've got my cool team over here. No, it doesn't mean that they are cool. It means that they are cold colors. We want them to be colors that think you think of when you think of the ocean. Okay, they're going to be on one. warm colors. They're on this side. They're colors that remind you of things like the sun or fire. We want them to be on two separate teams so that we know which part of our fish we are decorating in which color. Now, first of all, you are going to be doing the fish in red, or this portion of the fish, our sockeye for salmon, has that red vibrant body, so we want to do the same. So I'm going to take my red marker pen, and we want to make sure that these ones are water soluble. Uh, most of them will say that on the packaging, for example, let me have a look, or washable markers. I think this one says it here, right here, washable marker. That means that when we add water to it to make it look like it's going to make that ink run in the marker. So the reason why I used a Sharpie is because that's permanent. It doesn't do the same thing. So I'm taking my red marker. I'm going to be outlining my shapes. And if you go over, that's absolutely fine. Because remember, sometimes that can make artwork look even cooler. But try and stay. And we're coming all the way back around. And we're not going to color each of our different areas in. We're going to add different line um, patterns in here. So this one I might just do a series of stripes. Like so. All the way to the end. And we're going to do that for the rest of this part of the fish. So check this out. In these bright colors we're going to do the tail and the head the head is going to be in all cool colors those cold ones that make you remind you of the ocean so we're going to be doing a lot of greens and a few blues then we're going to do the same for the tail we do want to have a little bit of a red spot on the tail just like the salmon does in real life a little red spot right here so let's check this out Alrighty, now let's focus on the background. So grab those cold colors, the ones that make you shiver, and let's start applying them to the background to make this fish look like he's actually swimming up our Columbia River. Oh, I forgot to give him some air bubbles. Let's give him some air bubbles real quick. So I'm just going to grab a circle. Sorry, I'm going to grab a Sharpie and then a slightly bigger one and a bigger one. And it goes right over those lines. That's absolutely fine. I'm going to do one more, a little bit bigger, right here. Perfect. There we go. Now, background. Add as many different patterns. Let me grab the one I made earlier. You can see how many different types of patterns I added to the background. Let's try and do the exact same thing. So in this one, I have some cross hatch because they're crossing over. Here I have some circles. Here I have some... What's this kind of line when it goes downwards called? We're going to have some vertical. And then we have some horizontal lines because they follow the horizon. They go this way. Then I've even got some arrows up here. So let's have a go, see what we can come up with on our own background. Remember to outline first, then add the pattern on the inside. Let's get started.
Oh my gosh, guys, I don't know about you, but I am tired. My fingers are aching from all my coloring. But look at it, it looks so good. The last and final step, if you used water soluble or washable markers, is to add some water to your design. That's your appearance. If you use permanent marker or pencil, it's not gonna work. But you have created the most amazing sockeye summon. So let's check out what it looks like after we add a little bit of water. First thing you wanna do is get some clean water in a dish and get yourself a brush. Your brush wants to be relatively wide. We don't want to take all day, but a similar first, then wash out our brush. So we're going to clean our brush, make sure it's nice and clean, get a large amount of water on the end, wipe it on the lip, and then we're going to start adding some water to our design. Now, as you can see, the paint, sorry, the marker starts to turn into a paint and it starts to bleed or run away put the water. And it creates this amazing watercolor effect just by simply using our washable markers. And it looks so amazing. And then all the colors start to bleed together. Now you can see that I'm just doing the reds and pinks right now, because if I start doing the blues, it's gonna blend and we don't want that. So I'm gonna on the color wheel. So you can see I'm doing the fins, get them all done. Now that I've done all the red sections, I'm gonna wash out my brush nice and clean. And I'm gonna start working on all these blues and greens. So I'm gonna start working on my greens. Oh wow, look at that one bleed. That one looked amazing. Oh, green going into the blue there. That's okay. Wow, look at the colors. This is when I start to get really excited. Because everything kind of just happens on its own. And that's the way I like it. Because that's some, that means that sometimes we really do get those interesting effects. And happy little accidents and all that kind of good stuff. So... Let's have a look at this tail. Now, the tail's a tricky one because it's got a few colors in there. Nice. Look at that. I love the way it's bleeding in together. All right. So, I'm going to get this done and I'll see. Okay, now that our fish is all dry, we are going to do those last little touches. We're going to be re-outlining the edges along here. If you used a Sharpie already, great. If you used pencil, now is a great time to get out your regular marker if you didn't have a Sharpie and just go over your outline. Because um, you don't want to do that if you're using a regular pen, it become a bit of a mess. So if you were waiting, like I asked you to do at the beginning, then you can now move on to that or the Sharpie. And we're going to go around the outside of all our fish just to make him really stand out making that line or outline a little bit thicker. That way that our sockeye salmon has a little bit of, this is all about making it stand out from the rest of the page. And as we all know, emphasis is a principle of art and design. That means, like I said, it stands out from the background. Oh, he's looking so great. Last little bit around that little fin at the front and then nice and I just want to go around the inside of the mouth make that really stand out now you might have noticed I actually left this last little bit right here in white if you wish or you could even use a normal regular drawing pencil and just give that a light coloring in if you want to I'm going to give it a little bit of a little bit of color or a little bit of pencil there we go perfect and there we have it our very own sock island all right see you soon